please welcome the legendary Mr. Keith Scott. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. It's wonderful to be here for such a, a, a fine cause. And um, being voice-oriented, uh, this whole um, uh, exercise, I guess I've probably got the most eccentric use of the human voice uh, of anyone in the show. Uh, many of you people have kids and grandkids who've grown up listening to them. I feel like the national babysitter. For all these years, I was the voice of all the male characters on Blinky Bill and, and Bugs Bunny Show and, and the voice of Dexter the Robot on Perfect Match. Yes, I'll do anything. And uh, uh, so finally, after 35 years of doing cartoon characters, one of my um, daughters said to me, you know, you've, you've never even thought of recording all of these voices on your answer machine at home. And um, I'm so glad she suggested it because I took her advice and uh, I put all of these cartoon voices on my um, voicemail and now <laughs> I can get rid of telemarketers. <laughs> oh yes, because uh, now when we get one of those annoying phone calls, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll play this one at a little lower level. This is what they're going to hear, thank you. Oh yeah, what's up Doc? There's nobody here at the moment, right Daffy? That's right, Bugsy old boy, nobody here. <laughs> Get, I'll say, get off my phone or I'll blow your carcass off. Oh, I thought I had a telephone. Fluffer and There's nobody here. Hey, uh, hey, Fred, are we home? No, we're not, Barney, old boy, so let's go bowling. Huh? <laughs> Marge, there's no mm, chocolate donut. Heavens to Murgatroyd, there's nobody here. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, hate them misses the pieces like... Uh, Oh, olive oil, nobody home. Da, 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 da. Hey, Rocky, guess what? There's nobody here. Oh, I suppose he, 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 there's nobody home, so he, 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> yes, I, I actually did that on my answer machine, and... Um, Two nights later, we had one of those phone calls at dinner time, a very inconvenient phone call that you don't want. So that message played, and there was a horrible five second pregnant pause, and then I heard this. Oh, bloody hell, what is going on? <laughs> oh, dear, dear, oh dear, somebody, somebody help me, because I do not, I do not understand. I, I couldn't help. I picked the phone up. I went, I'm going to blow up the earth. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> it's the first time a telemarketer hung up on me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm thinking of marketing that. So, so apart from cartoon characters, you get all sorts of strange requests. So for many, many years, I've had to do um, funny radio commercials. They want me to do the voice of the Australian Prime Minister. <laughs> of course, that used to be easy. Um, Every five seconds now, it's a, it's a new one. <laughs> Took me long enough to get bloody Tony Abbott's voice, because that was a difficult, hesitant voice. Tony Abbott was always a, ah, uh, ah, uh, look, ah, uh, uh, look, oh, yeah, um, look, uh, look, we must um, stop the boats. <laughs> And I wish to God he hadn't said that, because cruise ships are some of the only gigs I get these days. But, uh, <laughs> but it's become so... You know what's made it even more difficult is the, the age of the internet. Everyone's worried about their image because they know that they're on the net all over the world in two seconds. Years and years ago when I started, there was no internet. And of course, the, the, the politicians' voices were so much more interesting because they were larger than life. They were themselves. There was no worry about image. That's why in those days... Every voice was distinctive. Now you'd never hear a Prime Minister talking like Gough Whitlam. Men and women of Australia. <laughs> or Bob Hawke. Everybody was, oh, my fellow, oh, my fellow Australians, oh, let, me, let me just say, oh, I know you still love me. <laughs> and so do I. <laughs> Very healthy ego, Bob. You know, one drink and he's his. <laughs> but uh, so it's become much more difficult. And I think probably um, the last really interesting voice was uh, was John Howard because he had that uh, whiny quality. 
Nalki, Nalki, my, my, my fellow Australians. The funniest moment I ever saw in the whole 11 years of John Howard being our Prime Minister was a Kodak moment when Arnold Schwarzenegger left the movies and became a politician and he was the governator of California, <laughs> or as he used to pronounce it, California. <laughs> And there was a photo of John Howard up to about here on Arnie. <laughs> and I was wondering, like, what was the dialogue that day in the office? John Howard probably strode in. Oh, it's an enormous uh, pleasure to, uh, to meet you, uh, uh, Mr. Schwartz in Nazi. <laughs> and I'm imagining Arnold looking at him going, my God, <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> Danny DeVito, I haven't seen you since Twins. <laughs> yes, you have to feel sorry for him. <laughs> now, of course, it's even more difficult because now we've got a, um, a former CEO and um, barrister as the Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull. And again, what do you do with a flat sort of a voice? As a, look, look, you know, there's never been a more exciting time to be filthy rich. <laughs> but he is rich. You know, Rupert, Rupert Murdoch's his paper boy. You know, so I, um, yeah, so now I'm looking to overseas because at least over there they've got, God, Donald Trump, I've got to work on him. You know, so. <laughs> got to put a dead guinea pig on your head. For, like, <laughs> we weren't the evangelicals. We won the young, we won the old, we won the highly educated, we won the poorly educated, I love the poorly educated! Oh my god. <laughs> I thought it was bad enough with George W. Bush. My fellow Armenian, Americans. Guess you saw what I did over there in the Middle East, I brought democraticity. Did this the good old American way by bombing the hell out of Iraqistan. So now we've got Barack Obama at the moment, who's kind of more of a straight voice. Not, not many ups and downs. He just says things like, uh, I am in my second term. And it has been very difficult because the once mighty American dollar has been downgraded from AAA to IOU. Not much to work with there. My all-time favorite was uh, the um, husband of the woman who's now running, um, Bill Clinton. <laughs> that famous moment even before YouTube where he said, uh, I did not. Now, of course, anybody who speaks in a shagged out voice like that, we just know he did. <laughs> he sounds like he's on his fifth cigarette. <laughs> I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Mrs. Hillary Clinton, for a very long time. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and then if it's not politics, I've got to look for voices. When you speak of voice day, distinctive voices, I've got to look to the royal family. You know, something, Prince Charles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sort of, hello. Mm -hmm. One of course is delighted. Uh, now that I've I've become a grandfather for the second time. And you never forget the first time. What an experience. Little scrunched up face, ruddy red cheeks, dribbling. Of course, that was just Camilla. <laughs> and I don't know what it is about Camilla Parker Bowles, but I've never heard her talk. You often see her, but you never... And I'm starting to think, is there a reason behind this? Imagine if she went on one of those British chat shows and we finally heard her talk. Somebody like Clive James is a, um, and now let's meet the lady to whom the crown jewels have an entirely different meaning. As we say, hail, God save the queen, and did Balmoral move for you, Camilla Parker Balls? Tell me, Camilla, Prince Charles has kept you out of the limelight. Why is that? Well, I don't really know. <laughs> Probably that bloody mother of his. Uh, I'd love to, I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> I'd live for a moment like that, but I guess. But uh, where was I? Oh, yes. And now, of course, 
Um, it's even difficult for me to find voices uh, in movies because the style of acting has become more underplayed. And so we've got actors like Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, great actors, but you don't remember their voice like you would somebody like Sean Connery. Uh, of course, uh, of course everyone knows I was the first actor to play James Bond. And judging by what came after me, I was also the last. <laughs> They're the sort of voices I'm looking for. People like Jack Nicholson in As Good As It Gets. Where do they teach you to talk like that? Some Panama City sailor want a hump hump bar. Sell crazy someplace else. We're all stocked up here. Those sort of voices, you know, um, people like Sir Ian McKellen, a great voice, in Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. A wizard is never late, Frodo Baggins. There are many magic rings in this world, Bilbo, many magic rings. They're the sort of voices I'm looking for. People like the late, just sadly passed away, Alan Rickman, uh, who was Severus Snape in the Harry Potter films. Turn to page 394. Wouldn't it be great, wouldn't it be great if the Speaker in Parliament had that voice? It'd finally make Parliament interesting. Sit down, Turnbull. <laughs> you may think you're the smartest one in the room, but I have news for you. Are you incapable of restraining yourself, or are you quite satisfied being such an enormous know-it-all? Oh, short and don't even think about it. You're so dull, Jehovah's Witnesses avoid your house. <laughs> Love to see that. Well, my uh, time is almost up, ladies and gentlemen, because we, we keep these shows moving. But I did, um, really, when I started out, and speaking of voices and things, and uh, World Voice Day, I um, really did, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to be a singer so bad that for three years, I was with the St. Agnes Girls Choir. It didn't work out for me, but I, I, did, I did spend many, many years studying all of the world's great singing voices. So I'd like to close with three of the most distinctive of the world's singers. Uh, we're going to start with um, a man who, um, uh, as far back as Woodstock in 1969, approached the microphone in a drugged-out haze, and his name was Joe Cocker. And this is a song that's already been done today, but this is my version, Joe Cocker's version. the record <laughs> and <laughs> and my two other my two other most distinctive um, vocalists will do as a closer um, uh, uh, the first one is one of the world's most distinctive voices and one of the most beloved singers of all time the late great Louis Armstrong who closed his shows like this Bye. 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 Bye.
Metro. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And finally, who better to do a World Voice Day than one of the great voices of all time, the late, great Elvis Presley. Last men say, only fools, only fools rushing. Oh. But, I, but I can't help falling in love with you. Take my take my hand. Take my whole, take my whole life But I, oh, well, I can't help falling in love with you Oh, 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 I, oh, I can't help falling in love with you Oh, thank you, Bob. See you at the Ladies and gentlemen, Elvis. thank you. The legend that is Mr. Keith Scott. That's all. 